Question, can eating more high-carb foods help you lower your creatinine levels? It's fair to say that the answer will surprise you. Catherine here, I've been working with people with kidney disease for more than 10 years now. And when it comes to protecting the kidneys, following the right diet is always the very first, maybe the most important step. Studies are very clear on this. When CKD sufferers stopped eating foods that damaged the kidneys and replaced them with foods that protect them, improvements in GFR levels were observed. Yes, in this study, improvements in creatinine and GFR levels were observed in CKD sufferers who started to eat more fruit and veggies. But you see, there are still people convinced that eating starch veggies, fruit in general, and whole grains is bad for them. And today, I'm going to debunk this misconception once and for all by showing you what the healthiest high-carb foods are. Because I've spent a lot of time fighting misconceptions about the renal diet and one of the biggest and worst myths ever is avoiding high-carb foods. Let's start by taking a look at some of the healthiest starchy vegetables out there. Starting with red potatoes. Red potatoes are a wonderful example of a food that's been avoided by too many people for all the wrong reasons. But these veggies are amazing. Potatoes are rich in nutrients and fiber, and they have many health benefits. Potatoes are a gluten-free carb sources that's also low on the GI scale, especially if you cook them the right way. Red potatoes in particular are a great source of resistant starch. This starch is not broken down and fully absorbed by the body. Instead, it reaches the large intestine where it becomes a source of nutrients for the beneficial bacteria in your gut. Researchers has linked resistant starch to many health benefits including reducing insulin resistance which in turn improves blood sugar control. Interestingly, you can also increase the resistant starch content of potatoes. To do this, store boiled potatoes in the fridge overnight and consume them cold. These will actually lower their GI even more. Question: Shouldn't you avoid potatoes due to their carbs and potassium content? Well, no, that's not a good idea unless your potassium levels are actually too high, which is not as common as previously believed. You see, all CKD sufferers have been wrongly forbidden from eating high potassium foods for a long time, but today this is finally over. Only those who actually have too high potassium levels should avoid potatoes and other high potassium foods. And only until the real cause of the problem is actually taken care of. And I've talked more in depth about this issue in my video up here, watch it now to know more. Today I want to focus more on high carb foods. So here's another great veggie that you absolutely want in your diet. Beets. Beets are, in my opinion, one of the healthiest veggies out there. Beets are very rich in folate or vitamin B9, which protects blood vessels and reduces the risk of heart disease, stroke, and it also protects the kidneys. Beets are also naturally high in nitrates, a very powerful vasodilator. This is the main reason why beets are so good against hypertension. Actually, in a study on kidney disease sufferers, those who drank juice made from beets had a very significant improvement in both diastolic and systolic pressure. Now guys, another question that I always get when I talk about high carb veggies. Why are you recommending carbs when a lot of people with kidney issues have diabetes? Shouldn't we actually limit or avoid carb intake? No, you don't need to limit all carbs, not even if you need to lose weight, especially don't completely avoid carbs if you have diabetes. You see, even the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, recommends eating enough fruit and high carb veggies. Fact, you can lose weight and lower your fasting glucose levels much more efficiently if you also have carbs in your diet. This is what a recent study proved. The study compared the benefits in terms of weight loss from a keto diet with a personalized diet that was low in GI. While initially the keto seemed to perform better, it was just an illusion. 
18 months after the dietary intervention, those following a personalized diet instead of a keto not just did lose a lot more weight, they also had improvements in all the most important metabolic parameters. They had better cholesterol levels, better fasting glucose, and so on. So don't do a keto, especially if you have diabetes, because a personalized diet with fruit and veggies will give you better results and in a safer way. What you should always limit or avoid, on the other hand, are high glycemic foods such as processed carbs and sugars, junk foods in general, obviously, and also protein. And if you need to lose weight instead of being scared of fruit and veggies, focus on limiting calories. Remember, there is a growing amount of scientific evidence that most of the benefits certain experts assigned to low-carb diets are to be assigned instead to any diet that is low in added sugar. So question, are beets and the other foods of today's video too rich in sugar? Can people with diabetes eat them? Beets have more sugar than many other vegetables, about 4 grams in one small beet. But that's hardly the same as getting 4 grams of sugars from a cookie, for example. Natural sugar is never the same as added sugar. You see, the natural sugar in fruit and vegetables acts completely differently inside the body than added sugar from junk foods. This happens because the fiber in this vegetable is going to slow down the absorption of this sugar. And consuming beets appears to be especially beneficial for people with diabetes. Beets lower the risk of common diabetes complications including nerve damage and eye damage. And while beets definitely are one of the healthiest carb sources out there, there are other great foods you can add to your eating plan. Fruits are a must in a renal diet, even for those with diabetes as we have seen, and some of the healthiest fruits include berries. Berries are great, super healthy and super tasty. I often recommend blueberries in particular because they are a real superfood. They're packed with important nutrients and antioxidants, particularly anthocyanins, which give them their blue color. Antioxidants help to fight against oxidative stress and inflammation in the body, which are linked to many chronic diseases, including CKD and diabetes. Blueberries are also low in calories and high in fiber, great for a snack. When it comes to healthy fruits, also consider grapes, especially the darker varieties. They are rich in antioxidants, including flavonoids and resveratrol. These compounds can help reduce inflammation and oxidative stress, which are associated with both CKD and diabetes. Just like berries, grapes are also low in calories and can be a great snack. Another fruit you may want to add is pineapple a bit higher in sugar and potassium than some of the foods of today's video. Pineapple is still a very good choice. It's the only major dietary source of bromelain, an enzyme that aids in digestion by breaking down proteins. It also has anti-inflammatory and anti-clotting properties, which could be very beneficial for individuals with CKD and diabetes. Now, we can't talk about high-carb foods without mentioning whole grains. Whole grains are an excellent choice of carbs because they are very rich in fiber to slow down carb absorption and to improve gut health. Fiber also promotes a feeling of fullness, which can help in weight management, but they are also an excellent source of many key nutrients. So consider including in your eating plan wild rice. Wild rice is maybe the best rice there is for people with kidney problems. Wild rice can contain as much as 30 times the antioxidants as white rice. It is low on the glycemic scale and packs a lot more fiber than white rice. And it also has some magnesium and B vitamins, all very healthy. It's also a good source of antioxidants. Now, wild rice has only one problem. It's expensive and sometimes hard to find. Still, if you can find it and it's not too expensive for you, wild rice is a great choice. And you can also consider barley. This is an amazing superfood. Barley is low in GI and phosphorus and it also boasts some anti-inflammatory properties. Barley contains betaine, a nutrient that may help reduce inflammation. Barley is also rich in soluble fiber, the healthiest fiber you can find. 
in magnesium, great to lower pressure, and iron to fight anemia. This is what makes it a superfood. And it's also great as a breakfast staple. You can find barley in flakes, and that's great to make porridge if you prefer to avoid oatmeal. Barley is also easy to find compared, for example, to wild rice and relatively inexpensive. It's also very easy to prepare. Throw some barley into a large pot of water and simmer until tender, about 15 to 20 minutes for pearl barley. Drain and serve with some olive oil and roasted veggies. Or add cooked barley to soups, use it in cold salads, or substitute it for rice in risotto. Another super healthy whole grain is buckwheat. Among cereals and pseudo-cereals, buckwheat is the richest source of protein, an antioxidant that may have a number of benefits for the heart and kidneys. A recent study linked buckwheat intake to lower blood pressure and lower cholesterol levels. You can easily use it in place of rice in pilafs or try making grain salads with it. And guys, if you want to learn more about superfoods that are a must in a renal diet, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.